The most terrifying moment of the day came during Sir Gregor's second joust, when his lance rode up and struck a young knight from the Vale under the gorget with such force that it drove through his throat, killing him instantly. The youth fell not ten feet from where Sansa was seated. The point of Sir Gregor's lance had snapped off in his neck, and his life's blood flowed out in slow pulses, each weaker than the one before. His armor was shiny new, a bright streak of fire ran down from his outstretched arm as the steel caught the light. Then the sun went behind a cloud, and it was gone. His cloak was blue, the color of the sky on a clear summer's day, trimmed with a border of crescent moons. But as his blood seeped into it, the cloth darkened, and the moons turned red, one by one. In A Game of Thrones, we are introduced to a young knight, Sir Hugh of the Vale, who has recently attained his spurs after the death of Jon Arryn. Sir Hugh is a rather random background character, and not very much is known about him. He's essentially just a plot piece, and a sacrificial lamb for Littlefinger to continue baiting Ned deeper and deeper into the web he's weaving. But is there more to Sir Hugh? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at in this video, when we dive into the mystery and murder of Sir Hugh of the Vale. Now, Sir Hugh has no listed origin story. He simply appears in the retinue of John Aaron and is his squire. And this isn't something that is particularly interesting in and of itself. Knights and lords often have multiple squires and multiple attendants. So Sir Hugh's presence as a younger man in the retinue of John Aaron is not at all bizarre. What is bizarre is Sir Hugh's garb during the tournament and the fact that Sir Hugh is singled out by Littlefinger to be murdered, even though he seemingly does not actually know any information about John Aaron's death. Say what? I thought Sir Hugh totally knew about John Aaron's death, or maybe helped poison him. I mean, isn't that what Varys implies? Yes, true. However, later on, Lysa affirms to us that she in fact was the one who slipped the tears into John Aaron's wine, implying that this was a closed loop kind of thing, with her and Littlefinger plotting and then carrying out the murder together. Sir Hugh was an innocent bystander, who just happened to get knocked off for the amusement of Littlefinger and to pull Ned Stark deeper into the intrigue. Or... so it would seem. But here's when we return to that garb. In that little reading that I did, you've probably noticed that he was not only cloaked in the blue of House Aaron, but he had the crescent moons. Now, we're not told these moons are explicitly cream-colored, but... I'm guessing, because they turn to red, that they're kind of lighter white beige color that's absorbing this red easily. For example, if these were black or purple moons, they wouldn't be changing to red. Okay, random internet guy, he was dressed in the cloak of House Aaron. He was a squire to John Aaron. What, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that Sir Hugh is secretly an Aaron? Well, I feel that there is at least a possibility this could be true. Lord Aaron was a kind and trusting man. There was a boy. All he was, he owed to John Aaron. But when the widow fled to the Airy with her household, he stayed in King's Landing and prospered. It always gladdens my heart to see the young rise in the world. He would have cut a gallant figure at the tourney, him in his bright new armor, with those crescent moons on his cloak. Pity he died so untimely before you could talk to him. I will also note that a slight reinterpretation of what Varys is saying may be hinting at Sir Hugh's potential links to House Aaron. So maybe he does know more about Littlefinger's schemes than he's letting on to, and he's just ambiguous and evasive when it comes to his language when dealing with Ned Stark. Now, whether or not Sir Hugh is secretly a back pocket heir to the Vale, or if he's just a lesser member of House Aaron that couldn't compete with Harry the Heir, or whether Sir Hugh may potentially have been a bastard of John Aaron and an illegitimate heir, are all unknown. This might be an interesting time to bring up why Sir Hugh chose not to return to the Vale. Varys implies that Sir Hugh owed everything he had to John Aaron. And it was suspicious, or at least it is implied that it's suspicious, that he failed to return home to the Vale upon John Aaron's death, with Lysa Aaron and the rest of the Hand's retinue. 
However, shining a new light on this and thinking about the possibility that Sir Hugh is a bastard or some other kind of non-preferenced member of a lower order of House Aaron, maybe the bastard of a brother or a cousin, might help us explain a little bit about why he wouldn't return home with Lysa's retinue. Bastards and other potential house threats and lesser heirs are often looked down upon and treated quite poorly. John Aaron's presence may have been was protecting Sir Hugh against ostracization, and thus a return to the Vale might not have been that appealing to Sir Hugh, who now, as a knight, had the opportunity to make something of himself. Such possibilities might have been limited in the Vale, assuming Lysa viewed Sir Hugh as a threat to the legitimacy of her son's rule. And she does seem to be really irrational about Sweet Robin, so even if Sir Hugh stood no chance to inherit, she still may view him as a threat. Now you may already have noticed that I've been accusing Littlefinger of conducting the murder. And this might have raised some red flags for you. I mean, what kind of proof do I actually have that Littlefinger is the one pulling the strings here? Well, when you think about it, I think it's actually pretty easy to pin this on Littlefinger. There are kind of only four real suspects in my mind. Random people who work putting on the armor, like squires and potentially stable hands or pages. Sir Gregor himself, in some kind of desire to just murder someone straight up in a tourney, even though he's apparently not known for doing that. I.e., we get no introduction of Sir Gregor as that guy who kills folks at tourneys. Varys himself is also on the list, but I think there's pretty reasonable evidence to suggest against Varys, and rather to imply that Varys is at this point being a little bit duped by Littlefinger, a fact that he does seem to admit openly in the book series. And finally, our last most likely suspect is Littlefinger himself. And given the timing of Sir Hugh's death and how well it plays into Littlefinger's plan to lead Ned down this false trail and start the War of the Five Kings, I honestly don't think there's too much detective work to have to foot here. I should point out that Littlefinger also heavily manipulates the questioning of Sir Hugh, convincing Ned Stark to send a representative, one not of high and noble birth like himself, mind you, to speak with the young arrogant knight. And it would appear to be this manipulation that leads to Ned not garnering any useful information from Sir Hugh, as Jory Cassell is basically just dissed and told to go home. This incident further highlights Littlefinger's heavy control and manipulation over the entire development of the Sir Hugh situation. So with Littlefinger in mind, let's take a look at Sir Hugh's actual death at the tournament. Now there are a couple of ways to look at this. One is that it was legitimately an accident. Somebody fucked up, they didn't buckle the gorget right, Sir Gregor's lance just rode off point and killed him. However, what the Hound says about his brother seems to imply this is untrue, and I can't really think of a good reason here why the Hound would be lying about it. So the second option is that this was a very clear-cut murder. Sir Gregor noticed a loose gorget, which was due to an unfortunate accident, and then took advantage of this accident to murder a random person at the lists. Now, while killing people certainly is in Sir Gregor's character, publicly murdering random knights isn't. When we hear of Sir Gregor, we hear of his keep being a darkened jury place where peasants turn up missing, servant men disappear, and the folk live in terror of their overlord. We don't hear about knightly murders. We don't hear about some missing son of some Lannister knight getting turned up dead in a hole. It just doesn't happen. Sir Gregor appears to be pretty careful about randomly murdering from segments of the population who cannot really do anything about it. And yes, I understand that some random knight without a family doesn't have an easy chance of getting justice. But how would Sir Gregor know any of this about Sir Hugh? Moreover, why wouldn't Sir Gregor assume that he is attached in some way to House Aaron? He's wearing House Aaron garb. He was the Hand Squire. It's a really odd murder. But what's even more odd is that Sir Gregor, through a jousting helm, would be able to identify a loose gorget from across the list. As far as we know, in their first tilt, Sir Gregor kills Sir Hugh of the Vale. There's no description of him riding past him several times. There's no description of Sir Gregor acting differently on a fifth tilt. It's just joust, death. So this means 
that for this to be true, Sir Gregor would have had to have noticed a loose fastening or an offset gorget from many, many yards away, through a jousting helmet, no less. And then he would have to, in that moment, choose to kill this random knight who he knew nothing about. Setting aside the fact that Sir Gregor may not even have been able to see Sir Hugh's armor all the way, if it were obscured by a tabard or his blue cloak for some reason, this seems like a highly unlikely option. And so essentially we're left with a third option, and that is that Littlefinger has carefully spread some money around to the master of the lists, maybe a squire, and Sir Gregor, in order to set up this murder in front of Eddard Stark. And when you think about it, the fact that so many pieces need to be in the right place at the right time really does ring of the chess master, if you will. Not only did Sir Hugh have to meet Sir Gregor in the lists, but he had to have his gorget put on him properly, and Sir Gregor had to identify this somehow, or much more likely, know about it. Furthermore, Sir Gregor then had to make the choice to kill. All of which seem highly unlikely, even for Sir Gregor, given the circumstances. He has yet to suffer any tragic defeats, and thus is not enraged. Weighing the murder in totality, it becomes rather apparent that Littlefinger is the only one with motive, means, and opportunity all combined in this scenario. So, call me an idiot in the comments section, I'm hanging up the Sherlock cap and pinning this one firmly on Littlefinger. Okay. But that said, we're now left with kind of a weird mystery. Assuming Sir Hugh is a rando who knows nothing, why does Littlefinger need to kill him? I mean, surely there are other ways for Littlefinger to put the Starks and Lannisters at odds. Well, this is where Sir Hugh's potential Aaron blood comes back into play. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I believe that Littlefinger is a much sturdier long-term schemer than he is a short-term planner, manipulator, or agent of chaos. So examining Littlefinger from the long-term planner perspective, we know he's making a play on the Vale. And we know he's making a play on the Vale that involves shuffling the leadership, it involves him being in a management position for a long time. Littlefinger is heavily interested in who the heirs are, and controlling them, and potentially, it would seem, even eliminating them. Littlefinger's care of Sweet Robin has been less than tender, and it does not seem that he has any desire to necessarily see Sweet Robin through to adulthood. So I think that Sir Hugh being related to the Seat of the Errands would actually make his murder and incorporation in general into Littlefinger's plan make a lot more sense. For Littlefinger, the trajectory of the War of the Five Kings ends with him in the Vale, and it ends with him controlling the leadership of the Vale. This is a task that would be made a lot easier if any potential heirs, especially ones as arrogant and intractable as Sir Hugh, were eliminated from the playing field. So why not just indoctrinate Sir Hugh and wrap him up into your little fingery schemes? Why not wrap him up in your little finger? If you recall Sir Hugh's behavior, Sir Hugh is arrogant and, as I said, intractable. Furthermore, Sir Hugh was close to John Aaron, so Sir Hugh may want to embody the actions of John Aaron. He may just simply view himself as above Littlefinger because he spent so much time in the company of such a great and powerful noble. There's not much we know about Sir Hugh. But what we do know implies that he would be pretty fucking hard to work with. So if you're Littlefinger, you're left with a guy who may potentially disrupt your plans to control the veil who's friends with, or at least a squire and close associate of someone you just murdered. You already have a direct line to an heir that supersedes Sir Hugh, assuming he is an Aaron, in the form of Sweet Robin, who is much more tractable and easy to control, and potentially your own son. And sitting next to all of those negative qualifiers around Sir Hugh, you have a need to keep Ned Stark on the trail against the Lannisters, and fuel his suspicions that they were involved in the murder of John Aaron. It kind of seems like Sir Hugh's fate would have been sealed long before John Aaron's death. Now, much of this is speculation. We know very little about Sir Hugh. His wiki history just says that he squired for John Aaron for four years, desperately wanted to become a knight, was knighted by Robert, and was close to nobody except his mother in the Vale. And I have been unable to find any sort of lineage tree with Sir Hugh in it. 
And I think with that, we're going to have to leave the video here. It's been a long and rambly journey, but I hope you found some interesting elements in what I've gone over. And no doubt we'll end up returning to some of these topics in the Littlefinger 5 video. Is Sir Hugh an Aaron? Is he a potential heir to the Seat of the Vale? Let me know. Leave me some comments and tell me what you think. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and all that YouTube nonsense. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.